Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. In today's video, we're going to talk about one of the most mysterious characters in One Piece, the leader of the Revolutionary Army, and considered the world's worst criminal, Luffy's father, Monkey D. Dragon. It seems Dragon has a deep knowledge about the Navy and the world government, even though he is not a member of either group. He knows most of the events that are occurring currently, and events that have already happened within these organizations. Now, he may have informants within the organization, but most of the information he has seems to have come through his own knowledge, and so the possibility exists that he may have been a member of the Navy in the past. Now, we know that Garp always wanted Dragon and Luffy to become sailors like him, but as we know, Luffy decided to follow the life of a pirate. While we know very little about Dragon, nor have the events of his past been revealed. In today's video, we're going to talk about the possibility that Dragon had been a member of the Navy in the past, and even more than that, he may be a former admiral who betrayed the group and abandoned his title to follow new ideals, and we'll talk about what could have motivated him to do this. If you're new to the channel, we really appreciate your help by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. It really means a lot and motivates us to make new videos. But for now, let's get into the video. To begin, Dragon is the leader of the Revolutionaries, a large secret organization that has very skilled members who seek to overthrow the Celestial Dragons. They want to stop the plans of the world government and the world nobles who carry out various evil acts across the world One Piece. As we know, the Celestial Dragons have the bloodline of the 20 founding members of the world government, and therefore world nobles consider themselves gods of the world, and they think they could do whatever they want without having any consequences. They mistreat people who are not a part of their group of descendants, attacking anyone at any time without even ever having a reason, in addition to using other people as slaves and as a means of transport to move around cities and islands, or forcing them to work for them. Because of all these evils, Dragon created the revolutionaries to destroy the world nobles and save the world. But first, it would be necessary for them to infiltrate the Navy, because through the Navy, they would have access to the world government and and consequently, the world nobles. We know that today there are members of the group who work undercover in the Navy. However, at the beginning of everything, Dragon may have been a member of the Navy himself. It may be that Dragon accepted Garp's advice, not for the reasons that Garp wanted, but instead to get information within the Navy. After all, Garp is against the actions of the world nobles. It could be that through the missions he was carrying out on behalf of the Navy, Dragon may have increased his position within the group. In addition, his father's position may have helped, which allowed Dragon to achieve a high position within the Navy. It may have been necessary for Dragon to obtain a title of great renown to gain access to the world government so that he could have greater contact with the world's nobles, so that he could, little by little, get informations about their plans. Considering the way Mary Joa, Castle Pangea, the Land of the Gods, and the Heavenly Dragon Gate work, Dragon would need to move through these locations to find information and flaws, so he could enter undetected if needed in the future. After spending some time in the Navy, Dragon could have easily gotten as much information as he needed to start moving his organization of revolutionaries into strategic locations. But first, he needed to erase his identity from the Navy, so that no one would remember his existence. And with the help of his fellow revolutionaries, Dragon would be able to erase all his information and leave the Navy. There is the possibility that the world government itself could have erased all of Dragon's information, in addition to prohibiting people from mentioning him as a part of the group. Just consider other events that we've seen that have been erased from history by the world government. This fact is even more likely. After all, they probably couldn't accept the world learning that an admiral had become their enemy. However, if Dragon had done all this, it would have surely made Garp extremely sad. After all, he may have felt Dragon had just used him to get what he needed, but Garp couldn't stop him, as not even he seems to know about his son Dragon's location. The last contact he would have had with Dragon would have been when his son gave him little Luffy, the little boy that Garp would take care of for some time before letting Curly Dadon take care of him. You see, Dragon could never live with his family, as his plan to bring together the members of the Revolutionaries group together would be his top priority. For a start, it would be necessary for Dragon to have several members infiltrate various organizations, such as Kuma, who had been given the mission to stay by Vegapunk's side to analyze his actions, while the other members would be infiltrating the world government and the navy to learn if they were planning something big, so they could plan what exactly they were going to do in response. Dragon would then set up his secret base on Baltigo, a secret island that is somewhere on the Grand Line, which has been the base for the Revolutionary Army for the past 10 years. But after the Dressrosa arc, one of Blackbeard's pirates managed to find its location. After an intense battle of the revolutionaries against Teach's pirates, both had to retreat from the location as Siphopole Zero arrived 
arrived at the location to defeat everyone who was there. So the revolutionaries moved to Memorial Island, also known as the Kamabaka Kingdom, where Sanji trained during the time skip. Even after having his trust betrayed by his son Dragon, Garp really doesn't show hatred for him. On the contrary, he still must love him very much. But because they're on opposite sides in this conflict, the two can't meet anytime soon. But even so, Garp and Dragon's love must still exist, as they both seem to value their families. Even if they are distant, Dragon wants his son Luffy to become stronger so that he can achieve his dream. The same goes for Garp. He wants his grandson to have a good life, even though he doesn't agree with Luffy's choice to become a pirate. So although they each occupy different positions in the world and have different ideals, they are still a family that doesn't hold any grudges for each other. They just expect each to do the right thing. Now, not much has been revealed about the revolutionaries so far. The only thing we know is their goal, which would be to defeat the world government along with the world nobles. But the revolutionary army's real objective is still hidden. Several chapters have passed, and so far, we only have the same information. But there is a very good possibility that the revolutionaries are waiting for the right opportunity to start putting their plan into action. This opportunity could, perhaps, be a great battle generated by some famous pirate, causing the three admirals and most of the navy to focus their attention so that the revolutionaries could act. But until that happens, the revolutionaries' efforts are focused on freeing islands from the world government's control. These accomplishments would become easier if the world government didn't have the protection of the marines. As in times we've seen the Straw Hats cause big problems in certain parts of the world, or even when other pirates are stirring up trouble in the world, such as the events in Marineford, the Revolutionary Army managed to save several islands when the world government needed to direct its attention elsewhere to the battle against pirates. But after the defeat of Dolphomingo in Dressrosa, they managed to obtain resources for future battles. Anyone who becomes a revolutionary is immediately considered a threat and becomes an enemy of the world government. Because the world government can control everything through the three great powers, the revolutionaries may be the biggest threat to their plans. You see, if the revolutionaries manage to take down one of these three great powers, it could bring an air of chaos to the world of One Piece, as pirates would gain a great advantage over the world government, perhaps even being able to unite against them. Now that the warlords of the sea are no longer part of those three great powers to maintain balance over the world, the powers are now mostly on the world government side. And in this way, they fight for the same goals as the revolutionaries. In any future battles, the world government's two powers, the marines and SSG, they would need to move in order to protect the world government and the world's nobles. So it could be if a powerful group of pirates allied together, all of the world government's power would need to come together, potentially changing the balance of power in the world of One Piece. And with the navy and SSG fighting pirates, the revolutionaries could do whatever they needed. Now the kings consider this organization a danger to them, because if the world government is overthrown by pirates or revolutionaries, they would lose the protection that they have. So the world nobles need the world government to remain the prevailing force in the world. In a flashback, we saw that King Thalassa Lucas stated during the revelry eight years ago that Dragon's ideals and actions were dangerous, and that the people who join the revolutionaries are considered notorious threats to the world government, especially high-ranking members. The kings seem to fear the revolutionaries more, because the shares and titles that the members hold just consider the fact that Dragon is known as the most wanted man in the world, being one of the people who threaten the world government the most. At the most recent revelry, Sabo, the second in command of the revolutionaries, faced Admiral Fujitora, and it's still not known what the outcome of the fight was, but it is quite possible that both decided to give up this battle in the end. The revolutionaries also have several powerful or famous members, like Emporio Ivankov and Inazuma, who were trapped on level 5 of Impel Down, being a floor where only the most powerful pirates are kept. So we can see the dragon has many interesting and powerful allies that may start to act against the world government directly in the future. But as I said before, they're probably waiting for the perfect moment to attack. Such an event may be a moment where his son, Luffy, manages to draw the attention of the Marines to a location, thus leaving the main base of the world government unprotected and allowing the revolutionaries to make their move. This move could mean even going to the gate of the Celestial Dragons to be able to save and free people. So for Dragon to know so much about the world, he may have actually been a part of the Navy, and considering his power level, he may have actually been an admiral, meaning he would have had to protect the world's nobles. This pass would further increase his anger against the world's nobles and give him insights on the ways to attack Mary through this insight, Dragon and the revolutionaries may finally be able to complete their goal of finally saving everyone who is suffering because of the world government, so that the world can finally change. But for now, I want to know what you think about it. Could Dragon have been a member of the Navy and thus get information from the world government so that he can act with the revolutionaries in the future? At what point should they start acting to finally take down the world government? Leave your opinion in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching the video until the very end. Comment on any themes or ideas you'd like to see in future videos. And also, if you've made it this far, give us a like as you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in our next video, and let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.